Football happy hour on HQ presented by Caesar Sportsbook. I'm Chris Hassel. I'll soon be joined by Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco. We're going to pick every Week 15 game against the spread. We are at the point of the season where the bye weeks are over. So every team is playing this week. We we have a great Thursday night game. We have a couple of Saturday games as well. We hope, fingers crossed, with the Browns' COVID situation. But we're going to kick things off Thursday night with a battle for first place in the AFC West. Week 15 in the NFL kicks off in the City of Angels with a big-time matchup in the AFC West as the Los Angeles Chargers play host to the red-hot Kansas City Chiefs. Sitting at 3-4 and four after Week 7, the Chiefs had just a 25% chance of even making the playoffs. But they've since won six straight and are now the favorites to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl once again. This year's Chiefs are a bit different than in recent years past, however, with Mahomes' stats a bit down in the 2021 season. They've turned to their defense during their win streak and have held their opponents to single digits in three straight. Anytime you can get late into the season and your defense will start to come alive, it always goes back to that old quote, defense wins championships. For the Chargers, they haven't won the AFC West since 2009, but it's theirs for the taking this year. Having already beaten the Chiefs in Arrowhead in week three, the Chargers, down a game in the standings to Kansas City, are still in control of their own destiny in the division. A lot of the guys are excited, and you know it's a great opportunity for us to play here again in our home stadium, and it's a really tough team. It's going to be a quick turnaround, but we've got to watch the film and get better and get ready for those guys. The AFC West lead is up for grabs. Can Herbert once again outdoor Mahomes, or will the Chiefs' defense keep up their toward play? Week 15 is about to get underway. Favorites were 11-3 and three against the spread last week. All season long, it's really been underdogs and unders, but maybe this is the beginning of a trend last month of the season. Chris Hassel joined by Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn. And Pete, look out. You've had the lead all season in picks against the spread. Here comes Brady with a 9-5 and five week 14. Hey, congratulations, Brady. By the way, I was actually 7-7, seven and seven, but we'll, we'll not go there because I had the Chiefs and sent in the wrong pick because I was in jury duty, and Brady <laughs> made the decision that there's no way we're changing that pick. And so we didn't change the pick, uh, and as it turns out, I ended up 6-8. and eight. Being that Pete was in jury duty, he should understand this because he's, he's the one that actually set the what's called precedent earlier in the year with some of these picks where – I had to eat a pick because it was more about the quarterback position, which one played. I made the selection, had to stick with it. That's how it works, Pete. Those are your rules, not mine. We are glad to have you back, though. We're glad you got out of jury duty. We're still a little bit sure how in the hell someone would actually ask you to be a juror. Yeah, how would you situation. sneak your way onto that uh, that that juror selection? I mean, you, you're the last guy I'd want on my I jury. Did, I tried. I tried. I tried to get out. I even said, hey, I got a good friend of mine, his assistant DA up in Jacksonville area, and <laughs> didn't work. They picked me. All right, let's move on to the picks here. Let's start with a great Thursday night matchup. The Chiefs, three-and-a-half-point favorites against the Chargers. Pete, you can kick this off. If the Chargers can win this game, and they beat Kansas City in Kansas City earlier on this season, they would tie KC in the division, and they'd have the tiebreaker the rest of the way. Yeah, and that makes this an enormous game, obviously, for both teams. And, and I think this Chiefs team, the biggest difference so far has been that defense. We know that. They've been outstanding. And when you watch them on tape, they're flying to the football. Steve Spagnuolo is uh, one of the best defensive coordinators in the league, very aggressive. Moving Chris Jones back in has worked. The young linebackers are running. The corners are playing well. They didn't even have Sneed last week. So I think that's the difference in this game. Uh, offensively, they haven't been the same team, but that'll get going. We're seeing bits and pieces of it. And so for that reason, I'm going to take uh, the Chiefs in this spot. I think that defense will do the job on Herbert, and I think Patrick Mahomes will do enough to win the game. So Chiefs uh, is my pick in this spot. I'm right there with you, Pete. I'm a little bit surprised, though. I kind of thought with it being three and a hook here, maybe you'd go with the home uh, underdog in this case with the L.A. Chargers, especially considering how those two teams matched up earlier this season. I don't know how different they are, at least when offense coordinator Joe Lombardi lets Justin Herbert cook opened some things up in the passing game, which we talked about all year. And not really knowing the COVID situation with a player like Chris Jones, the COVID bugs back. It's been a lot of teams. It's kind of concerning to know what to expect out of the Chiefs. I'll lay the three and a half points. I don't feel great about it. I feel better about the over. I think that's probably the better play in this game if you had to pick between the two. Uh, but I do think this Chiefs team is in a much better position right now. We know about the defense, but now the offense is coming along as well with the actual absolute beatdown 
of the Raiders last week. So I, I think the Chiefs will be able to put up some big numbers in this one and be able to cover the three and a half, but the over is the better play. Oh, yeah, Chiefs have won six consecutive games, but the last two times Patrick Mahomes has had a big game, it's been against the Vegas Raiders. If he can play against other teams like he's played against the Raiders, the Chiefs are going to be the team to beat in the AFC again. Quickly, Pete, if you had to pick one team in the AFC right now, would it be the Chiefs? Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. Because I'm a big believer that the offense will get cranked up. You haven't had Kelsey and Hill having big games maybe but once or twice this season in the same game. That'll change. They'll be fine throughout December and on into the postseason. You agree with that, Brady? Yeah, you got to pick Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, especially the way that team's playing right now. I think there's a lot of concerns really because that defense, we've seen them come around. But now I think the question is the offense. But it seems like they're starting to hit their stride and – you recall last year around this time, we saw the Tampa Bay Bucks start to hit their stride and look how that ended up. Well, let's move on to the Saturday games then. Uh, yes, there are Saturday games because the college football regular season is over. So the NFL is putting a couple games on Saturday. The nightcap, the New England Patriots, who have that number one seed in the AFC right now because of a tiebreaker. Uh, uh, they're nine and four, but they are underdogs, Brady, in Indianapolis against the Colts. Yeah, and so I'm going to go ahead and take the two and a half points and be on the side of the Patriots. I just think when you look at how their defense is playing, Christian Barmore has been one of the better rookies. I know he doesn't get a ton of uh, attention or credit for it, but he's been solid this year. The defense has been getting a ton of turnovers. I think that could be a propensity for Carson Wentz to turn the football over a bunch in this game if they can't run the football with Jonathan Taylor. So that's the biggest question mark. If Indy runs the football, they'll be able to cover the two and a half points. If the Patriots sell out, put this game on Carson Wentz's shoulder, that's where I think it plays into the Patriots' hands, and that's where the rushing attack, along with Mac Jones, who's good, done a good job of taking care of the football. We don't have to worry about him only throwing three pass attempts. They're going to be indoors there in Indianapolis. Uh, and so no scuba suit for Mac Jones. But I, I do think this is one of those games where going into it, I'm a little bit concerned about how the rookie's going to play on the road, especially against a Colts team that's playing much better. But I'll take the two and a half, and I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I think, again, not to harp on the over-under, but I think the under's the better play here as well. I'm on the other side of this one. I think this is one of those games where the number looks funky. I thought it would be closer to one or even even, uh, and it's not. And, and that tells me that uh, I'm going to take the Colts. Not for that reason, but you remember two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when they played the Titans. The Titans ran for over three, 200 yards in that game. Over 200, the Titans with backup running backs. And I think Jonathan Taylor will be able to run the football against the Patriots. And Brady, you mentioned it. You said if they could run the ball on them, They'll probably cover that number, and I think they do run the ball on them and have success. Uh, and Wentz will hit a few passes, and and yeah, Mac Jones on the road, big game. We haven't seen that, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I'm going to lay the points. It looks really fishy, uh, so maybe I'm getting uh, taken in by the fish hook. Colts favored in this game. If they win that, uh, that would go a long way to clinching a playoff spot in the AFC. If they don't end up winning that division and they do not have the tiebreaker, they're going to be a really tough out as a wild card team based on how they played the last two months of this season. Let's recap the, the picks from a couple of the early games. If we don't have the Browns Raiders game listed here. We're not going to pick that because at this point in the week, we're just not sure with all the COVID situations there with the Browns uh, what they're going to look like and if that game is going to be able to be played. But they agree on Kansas City, minus three and a half in L.A. against the Chargers. Disagreement there in the Patriots and the Colts. Now, while we aren't going to pick that Browns-Raiders game, we are going to get to Pete Prisco's spinning top of the week because, Pete, it is a Vegas Raider. Multiple Vegas Raiders. Yeah, it's the right side of their offensive line, and if the Browns don't have anybody that can put their hand on the ground and rush the passer, they're still going to get pressure. They were so bad last week. Alex Leatherwood at right guard, he's a rookie. I know he's making the transition from tackle to guard. And Brandon Parker, the right tackle, they were awful last week against the Chiefs. Anything and anything, they pushed the pocket, they beat their guys. Chris Jones, who's a good player, I get it, but that wasn't Chris Jones. Uh, every time they tried to throw the football, there was pressure, almost every time. Uh, that's just bad foot feet work right there. It's just terrible. Ducked his head. Uh, that's Brandon Parker. Leatherwood's on the inside at number 70. He had all kinds of problems as well. And look, Derek Carr needs to be protected just like any other quarterback, but it really goes bad when he starts getting hit. 
and that's the reputation on them. And, and against the Chiefs, it really showed up. Uh, play in and play out. He doesn't have any ability to step up in that situation. So they are my award-winning spinning tops of the week, Chris. <laughs> what award have you won for this? <laughs> oh, no, they win the award. I'll send them all a top at the end of the year. So you think they'd like that? <laughs> you got a lot of tops to hand out like because Brady, Brady, as you know, Pete doesn't just single out one player. He picks yeah. usually two, three, sometimes four guys on the offensive line. Or maybe five. Well, maybe the I mean, look, I could. No, I've done that before, too, because there's been really some of those performances that make you throw up, so you got to put it across the board. It's, look, there's a lot of bad offensive line play. And what I try not to do, by the way, is get repeat offenders. There are certain guys you could stick in there almost every week. That's how bad they are. Well, Brady, some of the guys that he's picked have ended up like gone down with season-ending injuries, so he can't have many repeat offenders because some of these guys were playing with like corn, uh, torn quads or something like that. Yeah, look, in, in, in the defense still of playing. the Raiders, by the way, that may be the case, but in, in defense of the Raiders, by the way, that pass rush has become lethal. Uh, we talked about the move of Chris Jones to the outside, but the addition of Melvin Ingram – I mean, he seems like a new man right now, really uh, energized by what Steve Spagnuolo is asking him to do within his scheme, whether it's off the edge or even though they stand him up and move him around, he's creating chaos with a combination of him, Chris Jones, and Frank Clark as well up front, along with the pressure packages from the Kansas City Chiefs. So I, I know Pete wants to be hard on the Raiders. That's one of the best, better pass rushes right now, at least what we've seen since they've uh, added on Mel Melvin Ingram on the outside. And again, the Raiders are scheduled to play against the Browns on Saturday afternoon. We did not pick that game because uh, we just don't know what the COVID situation is going to look like. By the way, can we get Brady's color coding on our cameras? Pete, uh, Brady Brady looks like he's been out in the sun on a Caribbean island this whole time. We look I've, like ghosts here. I, I've been on the Pete Prisco uh, day plan. Just try to get out in the sun as much as humanly possible. Uh, so that, that, that's what I've been doing for the past week or so. Now, I, now that I don't have to travel on the weekends, it's been nice. It, I think it's just the color coding yeah, on the camera. I haven't been in the sun in forever. Hey, Chris, I haven't been in the sun in forever, and I look white as can be, don't I? It's terrible. Yeah, you, 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 me and you kind of look sickly, Pete. Uh, yeah, he has been inside the juror box for, uh, for quite some time. Guys, uh, thanks for the picks on the uh, earlier games this week, Thursday and Saturday. When we come back, we're going to move to the Sunday early games including the Steelers trying to stay in the playoff race and the Titans still fighting for that top seed in the AFC. Big matchup coming up. NFL Weekly Picks Against the Spread, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, giving us the lines for the three early CBS games on Sunday. you got the Titans minus two with the Steelers. The Jaguars are favored because they're at home against the Texans. And the Dolphins looking to keep that winning streak going, looking to get back to 500. The early afternoon games over on the other network. Bills, there's a bunch of big numbers here. Three double-digit lines. Bills giving a bunch. Cards giving a bunch. Cowboys giving a bunch. And Eagles taking on Washington. That's a probably need to win or you might be done in the playoff race. The winner of that game will get to 500. The loser going to be two games below with three games to go. Chris Hassel joined by Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn. Let's start with uh, the good matchup in the AFC. Brady, you can lead us off with the uh, Titans giving two on the road in Pittsburgh. Yeah, kind of curious line in, in my opinion. Uh, I wasn't sure if it would be a little bit higher, with the, at least the way the Titans have played of late. Now, I don't have much confidence in the Pittsburgh Steelers offensively. Yeah, look, I realize they fought back in the second half to make it close versus Minnesota, but they looked dreadful in the first half. And there's been times this year they've just looked inconsistent. There's some boneheaded plays from time to time. The offensive line play has been inconsistent. So not a lot of confidence. All that being said, I'm going to take the two points here with Pittsburgh. I just, I think they still got a lot of fight left in them. I'm not necessarily buying into the Tennessee Titans and the team that they are without Derrick Henry in the backfield. I know last week they got a nice win versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, but that seems to be what everyone's doing of late. Uh, and so much different challenge, especially in Pittsburgh this time of year. I'm gonna, so I'm going to take the two points. I think the over is going to hit as well. Obviously, there could be inclement weather. That being said, I think both these teams could put up some points against each of these defenses. Yeah, I'm going with the Steelers as well. I think this is a great spot. Mike Tomlin was angry after the game uh, against the Vikings, and rightfully so. His lines got beat up. They got abused. They got pushed around 
uh, and they got dominated on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball. So uh, it took them a while to get going, but they got going. I think they're going to be refocused here. It's not like Tennessee scores a ton of points. They're not a great offensive team. Uh, and I think the Steelers will get focused on defense and Roethlisberger will make enough plays. I, I think this, the wrong team is favored. You're not going to need those two. Pittsburgh's going to win the game outright. All right. Both like the Steelers in this football game, and that would keep them very much in the running for one of those wild card spots in the AFC. Let's move on to the Texans and the Jags. It's a matchup between teams that combine four and 22. But I feel like we're going to get some interesting conversation here between Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn. Uh, Urban Meyer is a favorite in this game, Pete. Yeah, and I'm picking the Jaguars because I want to get a sit-down with them. So uh, if I keep picking them, maybe I can get, get an audience with Urban Meyer, which will make my day. It'll make my life. It'll make my career if I get a sit-down with Urban Meyer. No, that's not why I'm picking them. I just think these two teams stink. These teams are terrible. And you know what? Offensively, they're two of the they're two worst teams in the league. They're awful on offense. I love the under. But I think Jacksonville at home in this spot will find a way uh, to win this game. Look, Trevor Lawrence has been awful the last couple weeks. What they're doing to him is criminal. Uh, he can't throw the football. He can't stand in the pocket. The pr protection is bad. His receivers don't get open. They don't hand the ball off. They ran it eight times for eight yards last week. You can fall forward and get that. It's awful. But at home against another bad team, I'm going to take Urban Meyer. He's going to win a game. <laughs> well, he's already won a couple, Pete. Maybe you missed that. Uh, I'm on the other side on this one, and it's in part because of the hook, and Pete mentioned it. Both these teams have struggled this year mightily. Uh, and so you have to look at the trends. I think the Texans, even though, again, you can make the case that neither really is playing good football right now, I just kind of trust where Davis Mills is, who's going to start the rest of the season for the Texans, as opposed to Trevor Lawrence. Trevor played his worst game of the season last week, as Pete touched on many of the issues that they're having offensively. Clearly, there's even more to that, too, if you ask Peter and anyone else in the media about what's happening with on that staff. But on the other side of this is the Houston Texans that I don't necessarily feel like they're building something, but I think they get to see what they've got in a guy like Davis Mills, who at times has kind of flashed some of his ability. So if you're going to give me three and a half points between two teams that are pretty equal and it's all said and done, I'm going to take it. I don't know how much juice there is right now as far as a home field advantage there in Jacksonville. The best play, though, is the under. I don't think either one of these offense will be able to score many points in this game. Pete, what's up? Brady, Brady goes against Urban, and you're, you're on Urban's side. I told you, I'm just trying to get an interview. I want to get a sit down with him, you know, since people think I, I, I'm, I have anger since he didn't meet with me and do an on-camera interview. He actually met with me, but he didn't do an on-camera interview. I don't care. I, if nobody ever talks to me in this league, you can just rain it down on him. Boop, just, you know, boop, rain it down. The word is that Pete never did get that true one-on-one -on -one that he's looking for. Was so it a one-on-one, -on -one, you're, Pete? You're, you're always angry. Pete. I talked so to him for, I talked to him for, no, I talked to him for five minutes, not on camera. So it was a one-on-one. -on -one. It just was not on camera, and it, it was, was not very informative. It, it was right. a walk and talk is what I heard. Uh, I, I feel like we could do a whole hour on uh, just uh, Pete and Brady talking about Urban Meyer and the Jacksonville Jaguars. That would be interesting, uh, but I think some people would get their feelings hurt. So let's move on. Another CBS game early on Sunday. It's the Jets at the Dolphins, and Brady, uh, it, it's a big number for uh, a division game. Dolphins minus 8.5 as they look to win their sixth straight game, and they're coming off a bye as well. Pete mentioned it earlier about lines that look fishy. This one looked fishy to me, and so kind of for the same reasons he had mentioned, at least in regards to betting standards, I'm going to lay the 8.5 points. I didn't think it would be this many points, as bad as the Jets have been this season, for a divisional game between two opponents that are familiar with one another. And the Jets are playing a little bit better football of late. So a bit surprising, although, again, if you look at what the Dolphins have done, you know, Tua back and healthy, the six-game win streak, he's playing much better football right now. The defense is playing better. Even the offensive line uh, for the Dolphins is playing better. So I don't have much faith whatsoever in the Jets this year. This might be one I end up losing. But, again, another one that I like the under for because between both these teams, I don't see a ton of scoring. I just think the Dolphins can score enough to be able to cover that spread. 
Brady, that is the under is one of the under over unders I actually put on this uh, rundown because I like the under as well. That's my favorite part of this game. But if I had to take a pick, I'm going to take the Jets. I, I just think that's a big number. It's a bloated number. You mentioned it. It looks really funny. But I, I think the Jets will hang around. Miami is not a team that's going to blow out a lot of people. Uh, I agree. Tua is playing much better from the quarterback position, and the line has improved as well. I just think the Jets... Uh, even though their defense isn't very good, I think they're going to find a way to hang around. It'll be a touchdown game. So if you're going to give me eight and a half, I'm going to take the Jets. All right, both guys taking the under 42 in that matchup as the Dolphins try to stay in the playoff race. A win would get them to, to 500 and really give them a chance on a six-game winning streak if they can get it with three games to go. Those are the early games on CBS. Bunch of early games on Fox as well. And let's start with the, the Panthers going into Buffalo. And Pete, your pick preseason to win the Super Bowl I mean, that was kind of the team we got in the second half against the Bucks, but we, we have to see that for an entire game, and we have to see a lot more of that this last month of the season, or else they might miss the playoffs. Here, I'm not going to give you a lock pick, but I'm going to give you a lock. The Buffalo Bills will be in the playoffs, and there'll be a team nobody wants to play. They have four games left. Three of them are home against bad opponents. They will win all three. They will get into the playoffs, and then they're going to be a team nobody wants to play. And when you look at what they did the second half, and yeah, you don't take moral victories. They don't count, but that showed a lot of heart, and they put it on Josh Allen's right arm and his two legs, and he responded and had a big day. That tells me something about the Buffalo Bills. They will be uh, back in focus here. They'll get that offense cranked up. At some point, you have to run the ball in the first half. I I'm a big pass-first guy. But they go way overboard. you got to be able to run the ball some. They didn't do it until the second half. It helped open up the offense. I think they'll run it a little better here. Uh, they will find a way to cover this number and lock it. The Buffalo Bills will be in the postseason. Well, I don't doubt they'll be in the postseason. I mean, that's not really saying much, especially for a guy who picked them to win the Super Bowl or go to the Super Bowl. Uh, here's the problem. I still think they can. Yeah, that's great. We'll, we'll have the chance to go wait and see. But the reality is when you play in Buffalo – you got to be able to run the football. You have to be able to stop the run. They can't do either of those two things. They were giving up over six yards per carry to Leonard Fournette this past week. Two weeks ago, it was only three pass attempts from the New England Patriots, and then they ran for over 200 yards. A few weeks before that, then it was the Indianapolis Colts who ran for over, what, 260 yards. They can't stop the run. That's a problem. When you play in a bad, inclement weather type venue, you better be able to stop the run when the weather's going to dictate what your game planning is. On the flip side, you better be able to run the football. And if Josh Allen is now dealing with what a hurt ankle, foot, whatever the case is, is your best option running the football, you're going to be in trouble this time of year. So, look, they've got problems, but this is the opportunity to work on that. The Panthers, last time I checked, they can't run the football overly efficient unless they're going to incorporate Cam Newton and really sell out and make it the triple option as part of that. So you lay the 10 and a half points here. I think the Bills will overcome this, put up a big number against a Carolina team that seems to be falling by the wayside right now. But that doesn't mean that the Bills – don't have a lot of things that they need to improve upon and fix before they do hit that postseason. And Matt Rule has said that he's going to play both Cam Newton and P.J. Walker as he did last week as well. So a big number there, even bigger number for our next game. The Cardinals are giving 13.5 on the road against the Detroit Lions. It is the biggest spread of the week, Brady. Yeah, and I'll probably get it wrong because I'm picking the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, again, I, I love what the Lions have done. They've, they've got to win this season. I'm in, Excited for for Dan Campbell. Then they don't have to join the rest of that 0-16 Detroit Lions team, uh, where, where some of those guys have now made a career out of it, like Dan Orlovsky. All right, but the reality is, I'm going to lay the 13 and a half points. I think the concern for me is more from the Cardinals. What you saw with Kyler Murray, he didn't look 100% healthy. I thought the way the Rams went after that secondary was a bit surprising, given how the Cardinals have played this year. So this is kind of that get back on track game, apart because they don't have the weapons uh, in Detroit like we saw from the L.A. Rams. And even though it's the short week and a lot of points, I'll lay the 13 and a half points. Uh, I also think this is a game that could hit the over, in part because it's an indoor venue. I, I think the Lions might score a little here, but the Cardinals can put up a bunch of numbers. And I also think they get some things going in the running game as well. Brady, full of shots this week. I love it. I love it. I love when you come with the venom. Uh, I'm going to take the Cardinals as well. I, I just think, and normally I'd sit here and say, okay, short week, road trip, you know, what's the play for? 
But they were disappointed in how they played on Monday. You could just see it when they walked off the field. And I think they'll get refocused here. Brady, you mentioned it. The Lions are limited on offense. They don't have much that they can do in terms of attacking that defense. I think that attack defense will get after Jared Goff. So I'm going to lay the 13 and a half. I don't usually like laying a number like this, particularly in this spot. But it looks like it's one of those situations where you have to do it. Costly loss for the Cardinals on Monday night against the Rams. They go from the number one seed and the bye down to the three seed because it's a three-way tie at the top and they would lose out on the tiebreakers at this point. And remember, NFL playoffs now, only the top seed in each conference gets a bye, one team with a bye per conference. Let's move on to the Dallas Cowboys, also in the mix for potentially a bye if they can put things together down the stretch. They are at the Giants' divisional game, but another huge number here, Pete, ten and a half. I know it's a big number, but the Giants are awful on offense. Mike Glennon will be starting a quarterback. He's not any good. It's a bad team right now. And I think the Cowboys defensively have been getting better and better. And I think that's the biggest mismatch in that game. They now have their guys back from uh, injury on that defensive line. And when you bring Lawrence and Gregory and you have Parsons and and, and Gallimore in the middle of that line, you can get after the quarterback, and that's going to be a problem for Mike Glennon. He'll turn the ball over a couple times, short fields, lead the points. Look, the Cowboys' offense hasn't been playing well, and in fact, Dak Prescott and all that MVP talk is long in the rearview mirror because he hasn't played very well. He will here. This will be a spot for the offense to get back on track. I'll lay the points. I think the Giants are a mess. I think it would have taken the Giants here if Daniel Jones was starting. Maybe it ends up providing a spark for an offense there in New York, but because he's not... I'm on the other side. I'm with the Dallas Cowboys laying that big number. Kind of hate it, especially with 10 and a hook there and, and a divisional matchup where these teams know each other well. And you're talking about a home underdog. Uh, I actually think the under is the better player between the two. But let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Who would have thought that Dak Prescott, off the way he started the season, would fizzle out the way he has? And, and I do wonder if it's that shoulder injury that he was dealing with earlier in, in the preseason, if maybe that's coming back to bite him a little bit as he came back, obviously, from the ankle injury that everyone talked about, but then it became something else in preseason. So I do wonder if that's maybe something to blame right now. It seems like Zeke Elliott doesn't have the same pop to running the football or even out of the backfield catching the ball. The reality is, though, as Pete talked about, the Giants defense has been disappointing this year. You're going to see the Dallas Cowboys put up a good amount of points. Not enough to hit the over, though. The under is the better play, especially with Mike Glennon started for the New York Giants. We both like the Cowboys minus 10.5 in this one. One more early 1 o'clock Eastern time game to pick. And it's a huge game in the wild card race in the NFC because we could have a team get in there that's 8-9, and 9-8. Nine, nine and eight. It's totally up for grabs. So Washington and Philadelphia – are right there in the mix. Winner of this game will be 7-7. Seven and seven. Pete, the Eagles are given five at home. Yeah, and I think the, coming off the bye, they have a little bit of an edge, and we saw Washington last week struggle against Dallas for most of that game. And, you know, the uncertainty of the Heineke injury, uh, will be Heineke, will be Kyle Allen, we don't know. Um, and so when you look at that, I think the Eagles are the pick here. I think they're the better team. I think they'll be able to get after the quarterback uh, with their front. And, and I do think that the Eagles are better on offense right now. Uh, even though, you know, Hurts is back in there, they're a better offense. I know there's a lot of people out there that said Gardner Minshew should stay in as a quarterback. That's absurd. Uh, Hurts should be the quarterback. He will be the quarterback. And I think the Eagles find a way to win the game and cover this number. I'm with Pete on this one, laying the points with the Eagles, but are you sure, Pete? Gardner Minshew looked pretty good. I mean, at some point, can you give him some credit for what he's done in his career? I mean, look at his career statistics as a part of a bad Jacksonville organization. He came out actually on the other side looking pretty good. He looked good at his one start for the Eagles. So I don't think you blame those fans when they talk up Gardner Minshew. But Jalen Hurts is back in the saddle, probably taking on Kyle Allen. That's going to be a problem. And Either way, I think the Eagles' front will be able to get after, whether it's Heineke or Allen at quarterback, with the way the Dallas Cowboys were able to rush uh, the passer last week and be able to get a number of sacks, big plays on defense. So, look, this defense has been dramatically turned around from what they were a year ago with Mike Nolan to Dan Quinn. He deserves a lot of credit for it. Now it's time for the offense to really step up, um, at least when you look at the Eagles. you know. So bottom line is, 
I'm going to lay the points here with the Eagles. And, and I do think this could hit the over in part because there could be an offensive explosion from what you see in Philadelphia at home in this one with two weeks to prepare. All right, Eagles is the pick. Eagles minus five from both Brady and Pete in that uh, very important matchup in the NFC wild card race. All right, let's recap the picks for the early Sunday games. Brady and Pete, the first three games are on CBS. They agree on the Pittsburgh Steelers and both liking the Steelers to win that game. Uh, plus the two against the Titans. Also agreement on the Buffalo Bills, minus 10.5 against the Panthers. Some of the other games and other big spreads, they're liking the favorites here. Cardinals, minus 13.5 against the Lions. Cowboys, minus 10.5 against the Giants. They also agree on the Eagles, minus 5. When we return, we move on to the late afternoon slate. And we've got a great matchup between the Packers and the Ravens. Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco to pick that one next. Looking at the late afternoon games, the first couple on CBS, we have uh, the 49ers looking to solidify that wild card spot in the NFC a little bit more at home against the Falcons. You have the, the Packers taking on the Ravens and the Rams coming off that big win on Monday night hosting the Seahawks. Going to start by picking the 49ers Falcons, San Francisco giving nine at home. Brady, what's your pick? Debo Samuel has just become a beast for that team. And Jimmy Garoppolo is subtly having a good season. Not quite the season he had what, a few years ago now uh, when he helped lead that team to the Super Bowl. But the defense is coming along as well. And, and this is a team that I think is kind of one of those hot teams that's building to becoming, uh, dare I say, a wild card team. I don't think they're going to win the NFC West division. But uh, this is a game where you know, I look at it and I know it's a big number. But I like it because I don't think the Falcons can stop this rushing attack offensively. I don't think they're going to have much uh, much of a problem with that. And I think defensively, they'll be able to get after Matt Ryan and that Falcons offensive line that struggled this year. So I'll lay the nine points. It's a big number. Uh, I do think a good amount of scoring in this one, though. So I like the over of 45 and a half. And I'm going to take the points. I, I think Matt Ryan's played really good football this season, even though Brady mentioned that he's been beat up a bunch on that offensive line. But I think there's problems down the field with the secondary in San Francisco, and I think he'll be able to hit some shots against them to keep them within the number. I think the Niners win the game, and Brady made a good point about running the football like they always do. They will here, and then he'll hit some shots to Kittle, uh, and he'll be wide open. You'll sit there and say how that happened because of the run game. But I'm going to take the Falcons in the big number. I think it's too big. Uh, and Atlanta's playing solid football, and they'll hang around in this game. Uh, 49ers are loved by the sports line models. 81% chance to make the playoffs in the best position of any 7-6 and six team on either side, AFC or NFC. All right, those are the two CBS games, Falcons, 49ers, Bengals, Broncos. Let's move on to the 425 games over on Fox. It's the Packers and Ravens, and uh, Pete, talking to you earlier in the week, sounds like you're really worried about Baltimore even making the playoffs at this point. Well, we'll see how Lamar Jackson is and, you know, whether he plays or not. And if he plays, how limited is he? And I think that changes the dynamic of this team. And he hasn't played very well. Let's be honest about it. The last five, six games, they've been average at best uh, on offense. And the last time they really dominated a game was in mid-October. I mean, this is a team that's pulling out close victories even when they do win the game. So I, I'm worried about the Ravens. They've had a ton of injuries. The offensive line isn't very good. And the Packers are rolling. Uh, defensively, they're much better than they've been in the past. And we know Rodgers uh, will create problems for a secondary that's down Marlon Humphrey uh, and doesn't rush the passer all that well up front. So I, I like Green Bay in this spot. I am worried about uh, the Baltimore Ravens. I'm worried as well. And I think I would have taken Baltimore here if Lamar is going to play, or at least was, he's close to 100%. It sounds like, though, that it may be a little worse than what John Harbaugh wanted to lead on to earlier this week when he talked about, hey, it's not a high ankle sprain, it's just an ankle sprain. Either way, that's going to hurt one of the most dynamic players we've seen in the NFL and really the key linchpin to how your entire offense operates. So for that reason, I'm with Pete here on the Packers, uh, laying the four and a half points. I do think the Packers, as he noted, hitting on all cylinders, but I'm more concerned of just about whoever plays quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. That offensive line being able to stop against the pass rush. I mean, that's going to be the biggest issue, I think, for me, because if the Packers get off to a fast start in this one, it's going to be really tough to be able to stop those edge rushers and in part, too, with the way that offensive line is played. But uh, you got to give Tyler Huntley some credit. He did help that Baltimore Ravens team claw back a little bit last week, may have surprised some people. Um, so they might have a, a fighter's chance of this one playing at home. 
Uh, but bottom line is the Packers look to be, at least in my opinion, the best team right now in the NFC, or at least up there right next to the Tampa Bay Bucks. Yeah, it might be the best if they can get special teams figured out. That was a uh, that was an awful night on Sunday night against the Bears, letting Chicago hang around like that. Another 425 game. It's the Seahawks, Russell Wilson and company playing better the last couple of games, and the Rams. Pete, is this one of those games you've been talking about all season how one team wins a big game, you know, Rams go into Arizona and beat the Cardinals, and then they stumble the next week. Does this fit that criteria for you? Yeah, this is kind of a clash of my philosophies, right? You have a team playing uh, consecutive road games in Seattle against a team that's coming off the big win on a short week, and how emotional were they uh, getting that victory, and now they come home and play a division foe that knows them very well. And this number is way too high, uh, way too high, particularly with all the COVID situations with the Rams. Uh, Seattle's playing much better. Russell Wilson looks much better now that his finger uh, isn't really uh, impacting his ability to throw the football. So I'm going to take Seattle with the big number in large part because I think the letdown will be in play here more so than the back-to-back road games for the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know about the letdown, but I think Pete touched on the COVID situation. That's real. That is a concern, even though it really didn't impact them. Uh, versus the Arizona Cardinals last week. Uh, And that game probably wasn't as close as the score indicated. I do wonder if that was kind of the jumping off point, though, for the LA Rams this season. This is a talented team. It's one in which I think some people talked about them having Super Bowl aspirations with the addition of Matt Stafford this year. And they hadn't necessarily played up to that standard, at least versus solid competition over the past month and a half. Well, now they have. Looking at that big win last week versus the Cardinals, I think this is another good spot against divisional opponent. They take advantage of a defense that's been uh, pretty poor all year long in the Seattle Seahawks Uh, and Pete touched on the fact that Russell Wilson is starting to adjust to the finger injury the passing game is coming along however I do think the Rams will be able to have a little something for him and it might be hard for them to keep pace so I hate the number here at seven it's big for a divisional matchup but the Rams are playing at home so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lay the seven points and I think it's gonna hit the under both teams scoring some points there but not quite as high scoring as maybe what we anticipate all right, let's recap the picks from Pete and Brady here. Our late afternoon games on Sunday and some pivotal matchups. They like the Bengals to go into Denver and pick up a big win. Uh, Bengals are getting a point and a half in that game. Also agreement on the Packers, minus four and a half at the Ravens. And uh, they differ on those other two matchups late on Sunday. Up next to the primetime games on Sunday and Monday. Sunday night football features Tom Brady and the Bucks against the New Orleans Saints, who have had his number in the regular season since old Tom went to Tampa. All right, let's pick the primetime games. Our game lines presented by Caesar Sportsbook. The Bucks' heavy favorites at home against the Saints. That's Sunday night football, and Monday night football is in Chicago. The Bears at home against the Vikings, with Minnesota favored by three and a half, and... Uh, Tied for that last playoff spot in the NFC right now with four games to go. Chris Hassel joined by Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn. And Brady, uh, the the other Brady, Tom Brady, he he has not had success against the New Orleans Saints in the regular season so far since he went to Tampa. Does that weigh on your mind at all this week? Maybe a little bit. And I think it's in part the only reason I say that is because of of history and maybe the scheme that Sean Payton and their staff kind of brings to it. But Look, the Buccaneers are going to win this game. Let's not get that twisted. It's just 11 points is a little bit much considering the history there, the divisional opponent, the familiarity between the two of these teams, and really Alvin Kamara being back. That's the biggest thing. We saw his impact last week on this offense, uh, granted versus the Jets for the Saints, but still, it's a better fit for what they're working with right now with Taysom Hill at quarterback and Alvin Kamara and the issues that presents a lot of defenses having to account for both in the running game. So this game, in my opinion, will be within that number of 11 points. It's just a little bit too much. But I do think the Bucs are going to win it. And I do think there will be a lot of scoring in this one. So I like the over as well, Pete. You can't pick against Taysom Hill. Never. Do not pick against Taysom Hill. He's too good a quarterback to pick against. In all seriousness, I got to give Taysom Hill some credit. He threw the ball well last week much better than he did the week before when he was a disaster, which is progress. And I think they're going to gimmick some stuff up with him to keep this game close. That New Orleans defense is pretty good, and I don't think the Tampa Bay defense is playing great football right now, so that number is too bloated. I'm going to take New England plus the points. Don't bet against Taysom Hill. Pete turning over a new leaf. He's, uh, He's got kind words to say about Taysom Hill. 
Tua Tungabaloa. Uh, anything good to say about Gardner Minshew? He had a good game last time out, too. Uh, no, you are what you are. He's a backup quarterback. <laughs> he may have right. started this. He, he may have starting. Hey, let's move on to the Monday night game. Uh, and it's it's a matchup between two losing teams right now, though Minnesota is in the wild card race in the NFC. Vikings minus three and a half at the Bears. Pete, what are we doing with all these Bears games in primetime? Uh, did you call the network and ask for them? I mean, then maybe uh, they're even as a Bears Chris fan, I would oh, not wait. do that. You don't want to see them either. No. They're they're not a good team, but. <laughs> You know, the rest of the season's all about Justin Fields. Forget about the one-loss record. And, and he does some really good things, and then he makes some really bad decisions like the pick six last week. But that's what a rookie quarterback does. They have to be encouraged by his progress. Now, having said that, I think the Vikings are the pick here. Uh, Minnesota's played really good football on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, Kirk Cousins has had a good season. Now, we saw him tightening up late in the game last week. Uh, that happened. Uh, and Dalvin Cook ran all over Pittsburgh last week. I think they'll do the same thing here. I don't like the way the Bears are, are playing in terms of where they're headed. Their coach is going out the door at the end of the season. So I'll take Minnesota to keep their playoff hopes alive, and I will lay the points. I'm laying the points as well, Pete. And look, Minnesota's just a better team this year. Uh, I think the one thing we could probably guarantee ourselves, though, is you know, they'll probably only win by one score in this case, right? And there could be some uh, drama when it comes down to the end of the game, much like we saw last week versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, and really throughout the course of the season for Minnesota. Uh, but look, defensively, they're playing better. Offensively, they're able to run the football effectively. Justin Jefferson may be the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. Uh, yes, dare I say that. Uh, so whether they have Thielen back or not, I don't think that's going to play much of an issue on this one. I think the Bears are going to struggle to score some points, even though they're playing at home. Uh, but Pete touched on it. Justin Fields has continued to improve this year. Uh, I don't know if Matt Nagy is going to be his coach next year or not, but hopefully they can continue to protect him and build off the foundation that he's had this season. He did some really nice things last week versus Green Bay. Uh, kind of got out to an early lead, kept him in that game for a period of time. And then obviously you saw the greatness of, of Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, but that's not going to be the case here. This, this will be a closer game just because that's the nature of how the Minnesota Vikings play this year. Uh, but I do think they'll win by more than three and a half points. Every game not only comes down to the wire, but is decided in the last play of the game, or so it seems with the Minnesota Vikings. It's wild. And uh, I feel like if they're the team that gets that last wild card spot in the NFC, it could be uh, it could be a dangerous team in the postseason with old Kirk Cousins at the helm. Pete Prisco, Brady Quinn, Giving us picks this week in the NFL with four weeks to go in the regular season. And they agree on the primetime games. New Orleans getting 12 in Tampa and Minnesota giving three and a half in Chicago. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.